Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Odette Hines and I'll be your moderator for the webinar entitled Introduction to Sony's Presence, Low Power Consumption. Your presenters today will be Armagon Ibriami, who is a partner solutions engineer at Sony. She worked with, diff with different divisions at Sony to bring the innovations to developers and businesses to build scalable solutions. She has over 20 years experience in the high-tech industry with a mixed background on hardware and software engineering. She has worked on chip level verification on ASIC and FPGA all the way to video player on Android and iOS devices. She supports Sony's presence in North America. Our other presenter is Kamal, Tam Kamal Tamasuski, is a developer programmer at Sony. He's one of the major contributors to the Spresence technical support. He has supported Siam Circuit Python on Spresence. He is currently supporting the Spresence documentation, building demos and tutorials, as well as interacting with customers and developers on the forum and events with technical questions. Before we start today, I want to provide you with a few housekeeping rules. All participants are in listen-only mode. If you have a question during the webinar, please type them in the question section in your GoToWebinar control panel, and I'll ensure that they're answered at the end of the webinar. If we do not get your questions today, we'll send the answers to you a few days after the webinar. The on-demand version of the webinar will be available within the next few days. We will ensure that it is sent to you as well. If you require a conversation or a demo, please ensure that, that you put your request in the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel, and I'll ensure that they're directed to the presenters at the end of the webinar. Now, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, Arma Ghan. Armagon? Yes, I need to get access to the screen. Oh, I think I've already given it to you. Just give me a moment here. Mm -hmm. Talking about technical difficulties today, huh? <laughs> Talking about technical difficulty, yes. Just bear with us. Please. Yeah, just bear with us for a quick second here. Just keep bearing with us for a moment. We're just having a few technical difficulties. And we're back online. Armagon, you could go ahead and take it now. Thank you. I, just a second. I don't, do you have to wait maybe a little bit? I don't get the uh, access still. Yeah, this is weird. It is.
Okay, guys, if we could do this, can we log off and we'll come back on? I'm trying to figure out what is going on with this platform. It's actually uh, frozen on my back end. So just give us a few moments to log out and we'll log back on. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for bearing with us. We're still trying to figure this out on the, the back end here. Just give us a moment. Okay, uh, here's the update. I think uh, there is something wrong on our back end here. I will um, probably need to either reschedule the webinar for a later date today or probably next week. Just give us a moment or what we'll do is probably try to log out again and log back in to see if this will change. I sincerely apologize for this. I'm not sure what is happening on our end. Just give us a moment here, please.
Yes. Hello, we seem to have been back up now. Is it possible for Armagon to proceed? Or actually, you know what, I'll start from the top again to make sure that uh, we got this done properly. So uh, without further ado, I'll pass this over to Armagon. Armagon, are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, can perfect. You, so, can you see my screen? No, I'm not seeing your screen. Could people in attendance let us know if you could see the screen? Yes, mm -hmm. I can now see your screen. Okay, perfect. So let me just go to the presentation mode. <clears throat> so is it, so can you see my screen now? Good and ready? I can, so you can proceed okay. now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So hi everybody, this is Armagon. Sorry for the technical difficulties. When you need the technology, it just, uh, this kind of things happen. I, I guess there are a lot of people using this platform for webinars and uh, we have been trying to prepare from long time ago. So it's unfortunate that this happened this morning. But uh, anyways, let's just start with Espressense and see what is Sony Espressense. Uh, Sony Espressense is, uh, is a development kit and we are using the, uh, we are targeting IoT application which they need edge computing with low power consumption. In this webinar is more like intro, so I'm going over some of the details about Espressense and how to start with Espressense, and hopefully you will uh, you will uh, get good information out of this uh, webinar. So. Um, Let me first tell you what is uh, what is covered in this uh, uh, webinar. I will give you uh, some information about hardware, software, tools uh, for Espressense, and then I will talk about uh, target applications. Uh, at the, uh, uh, after that, I'm going to talk about sec uh, secret of uh, low power, and then I will talk about multi-programming using Arduino IDE, which is one of the popular feature features that we have provided for Espressense. So first, let's talk about what is Espressense and what do you expect, what do you get with Espressense? Espressense is a development kit, is a compact development kit. And um, as you see in this uh, slide, I have divided to two sections. So if you look at the right section, it's gonna give you all the features and highlighted uh, capabilities of Espressense. And then the table on the left, it shows some more detail as far as the spec for Espressense. Espressense has six ARM cores. So I'm talking about the right side now. Espressense has six ARM cores and uh, is, um, uh, it has six, six ARM cores using FDSOI technology to make it ultra low power. So I'm gonna give you a little bit more information when we get to the section for low power. And um, also we are using the ASMP framework for the multiprocessing. It means that for each processor, you have a dedicated memory. Again, in the section that I talk about low power, I elaborate more and tell you how this works and how it helps with the low power uh, capability. The other capability that we have for Espressense is uh, high resolution audio. We are Sony, so one of the uh, price that we have is our audio systems and audio capabilities. Why not give that access to our developers to have high resolution audio? So high resolution audio is one of the capabilities of uh, Sony um, uh, Espressense board. And also we are supporting GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. In, any place in the world, in Russia, in China, in US, in Japan. And uh, so you can uh, program and you can use this capability. Most of the boards out there, uh, they don't have GPS. So this is one of the highlight, highlighted capability of Espressense. So now that you know what are the features, let's look at a little bit uh, more detail about the spec for Espressense. As Espressense, as I mentioned, it has six ARM cores. This ARM cores, the type is M4F, which um, has a clock frequency of 156 megahertz. This RAM is 1.5 megabyte. We have also a flash memory, eight megabyte. You can have access to digital I.O., which are GPIO, SBI, I2C, UART, and PWM. 
And then uh, for analog, analog inputs, we have six channels, 3.3 volts range. And uh, of course, we have high resolution audio. For audio, we have uh, eight channel for digital mic, four channel for analog mics, and uh, we have stereo uh, speakers. As far as GNSS, as I mentioned, so we have GPS in the US, GLONASS in Russia, Baidu in, in China, Galileo in Europe, and QZSS in Japan. Other type of um, uh, uh, which, uh, other other options or other um, spec that I would like to share with you is we have a camera interface on the board. So you just slide it in and you connect your camera, and then you have a SD card access. You can put your files over there, maybe for AI, maybe your music or anything that you need to get access to. And then also I scored as uh, capability. So. You got a, now you, this page is, is a, one of my uh, uh, pages to show to people to in one glance, glance you will see all the features, a little bit of a spec. So now let's talk about the board configuration. With the Espressense kit, what you get, I'm starting from the left side, you get a camera board. This is a very simple camera to just make prototyping faster. And then we have the main board and then we have the extension board. Main board, as it as you can guess from the name, this is the brain of this development kit. The rest, the camera and extension board, is just to make your life easier. So for uh, for um, for the next slide, let's talk about what is what is in the main board, what is its support supporting, and so on. So for the main board, as you see in this picture, I have two chips. On the right side is CXT5602. This is the brain, and then CXT5247 is another chip that we have on this main board. Uh, these two chips are Sony chips, has already been used in a smart headphone from Xperia headphone from Sony. So this is, has been already used in an actual product. And um, if you want to uh, understand the chips a little bit better, so look at under each of these, uh, I have listed the functionalities and supporting capabilities under each of them. Let's look at the CXD5602 on the right side first. So we have low power GNSS function. This is the GPS or Galileo or other capabilities that you need for global navigation satellite system. We have multi-core processor. Uh, capability on this one, and then high resolution audio codec, and then also the camera interface supporting by this chip. And then let's look at the left side, uh, the other chip, which is CXD5247, is um, taking care of the power management, class D full digital amplifier, microphone interface, a speaker interface, and battery uh, charger. So, this, if you look at this, you can build on top of this board to make your prototype. But at the end, when you when you go to mass production, you get these two chips. So you, you can design based on what I, the information that I give you today, it's basically how you can use this development board to do your prototyping. But eventually, if you go large volume, then you get these two chips to build your actual product. Uh, so, Let's see. Uh, let's see what what uh, what are other uh, because I just I show you other uh, components. So basically, if you look at this slide, you will see on the top right you see the extension board and then you see the camera board next to it. And I have two more uh, pictures which is showing BLE and sensors. Why did I put these things together? Because Spressense is low power. You can do edge computing. You target IoT applications. For IoT applications, what you need is, um, of course, the extension board gives you more capability, access to audio out and others that I'm, I'm going to talk about more. And then you have camera, but you need to connect this to a bunch of sensor. You need to connect this presence board to a bunch of sensor to get some information from your environment. Maybe this is a field that you need to get temperature. You need to get uh, some, some information from your sensor so you can add your sensor. Also, you need to have some type of connectivity. It, ha it can be Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or any type of connectivity that you need. So when you put these things together, you can build your prototype. Extension board that you see here is just to make your life easier. What does it do? You have, a, you have access to a SD card, which for example, one of the 
demos that we did, we built the whole model for our AI and just we put it on that SD card and then Express Sense board could access that information to do some recognition. I'm going to talk about it a little, a little bit more later, but also you can put uh, other uh, um, in with the extension board, you can add Arduino shields uh, on, on this board because it has the Arduino form factor. And uh, so basically extension board is to make your life easier. If you can just, if you just need the main board to build, uh, that would be enough. Then you don't need, if you don't need to access to this uh, capabilities on the section, extension board, don't worry about it. And then camera again, we have this, we have this side, you can uh, start to put the camera, uh, it has the camera interface, you can connect your camera again to make your prototyping faster. Okay, so let's, talk about this a little bit, bit more and tell you uh, how you build your prototype. We are making this a lot easy, flexible, expandable, and we are using the sandwich concept design. So uh, sandwich co concept design, it means that in the middle you see my main board. I'm telling you, main board has the chips, is the, is the brain. But the others on top, they are all of other connectivity or your sensors or anything that you need to add, and you put it on top of main board. And then if you look at the bottom, I have LTE board, I have extension board, and also I have a portable player extension board as well. What does it mean? It means that, okay, I have my main board. If I need to connect to LTE, I can connect it in the bottom to the LTE. Or if I wanted to access to any Wi-Fi or BLE or LoRa or any type of things that to give me the connectivity, I put it on top of um, on top of the main board. So uh, one thing that I would like to mention here is LTE board is actually a new product that is going to come out in the summer. So uh, it, it has been very or, uh, already very popular in Japan, but we are trying to bring it as soon as possible uh, to US as well and North America and uh, uh, to to provide it uh, and uh, give it to uh, provide it to our uh, developers and customers. So, so here you, you learn how you, this is the sandwich concept. Let's go uh, to the next slide. And uh, here, what I would like to explain is, I told you the top part was all of the connectivities. So for the connectivities, it could be a function add-on. So function add-on, it could be a, um, a Wi-Fi or VLE or any type of connectivity. And sensor add-on that you see on the left side is um, any type of sensor that you need to get temperature, you need to get the um, moist or any, any kind of information regarding your sensor. Then this is how you build your prototype. You put it on top of um, uh, main board. So as you see in all of these pictures, it, you, it is very easy to do prototyping. We are trying to make it faster. One thing that I would like to mention about the previous slide, actually, let me go back. So as you see here, main board is from Sony, extension board is from Sony, camera, of course, is from Sony, and then LT board is from Sony. The other connectivities or sensors that you see here, even the portable player extension board, these are from our uh, third party um, uh, partners that they are providing that. But what I would like to say is you are not limited to this. You can go with any type of add-ons that you, that you want. So, and then this one I explained already. So, so far you have learned about the board, you learn about the spec. Now let's see how we can program this board. To do any development with this board, you can do, uh, you can use two things, Arduino ID or Nutex SDK. Arduino IDE, why? Because it's popular. There are a lot of developers. They use Arduino to develop their uh, prototype. And uh, Nutex is more for advanced users. If you are more comfortable with command line, just go with Nutex. The other thing that I would like to mention here is Nutex, it gives you more flexibility. If you want to change a library, if you want to make it custom, you can do it on, on the Nutex side. So, and the reason that I'm saying this because of the next slide, but I'm going to tell you later. So here I um, I have provided two videos. One of them is uh, the the in the bottom. If you see the sign, so is the starting with the Sense SDK for Arduino and uh, uh, sorry for for the Notex and also I have the Arduino uh, video. Uh, I'm not going to play these videos. I I'm trying to 
put all of the information and supporting materials and links that you need to look at in this slide that later on when we share this with you, you have references and you know where to start. So make sure you, you go to these videos after six minutes. Next thing you know, you can just set up your whole system. You can light up the LEDs that are already on the board and uh, know how to, your, your first Hello World program is going to start with, with these two uh, videos that I have provided here. So one is for Arduino, the other one is for SDK Natix. So uh, we learn about the hardware, we learn about the programming. The, another thing that I would like to, is very exciting to share with you is the uh, Espressense is the open source hardware and software. So you can build your own add-on, you can build your own extension board, and all of the information that you need to start with is in this link that I'm providing here. So you go there, you look at the files, you look at the schematics, and all of the information that you need to start with. So we are sharing this. We have a very good uh, document online, and we have a forum to support that. So make sure you go and look at that, and if you have any question, you can submit your question to our forum. Uh, last thing about uh, Espressense and what is Espressense I would like to share with you is artificial intelligence. Usually when we have a, any IoT uh, application, we need to make it smart. We need to do some, uh, some development to uh, make it even more uh, uh, capable. So to bring that capability to Espressense, right now, we are offering this free tool, which is Sony Neural Network Console. You don't need to be a, um, a data scientist to use this. If you are an, if you're an engineer, you want to do development, you can use this tool easily, and you can build your network, neural network, your model, and then you can feed it to Espressense. And uh, also, let me tell you this, in my next webinar, I'm going to give you more details, more training, and uh, tell you exactly how you can use this to tool and maybe give you a, a detailed example also, step by step, how you can uh, do it. But it's very simple. It's very uh, easy to use. It's all GUI-based, and we just made the data sciences uh, very, very easy to uh, use this tool. This is, use this tool, sorry. So let's see what is happening here. So when you build your IoT, you need to collect data. This, this data can be images that you need to take a picture of a cat, like you need to take like 6,000 pictures, right, right? So to take that picture, if you look at my expressions here, is already connected to the camera. Camera can take that picture for you. So you take all of your pictures, now you have your database or data, uh, data set ready. And then when you have your data set, you have to go to tool that is NNC your, or Neural Network Console. The link is in pink, I put it up there. And then in the, using that tool, you can design it, design your neural network, you can train the neural network, you can produce the trained data. So all of this is happening in this tool. And then after that, you have an NMB file. That NMB file is your whole model to detect the cat face or detect the gesture or detect some something that I'm talking about image here. So you have that or uh, you have that ready, then you need to install the network and the train data on Espressense. So the next step is you get that output, you put it on Espressense. And then again, when you want to do recognition you use the camera from the expresses and you do the recognition i will uh, uh, I, have, I have provided if you look at the left corner i have provided the dnn um, uh, runtime library uh, for both arduino and uh, notex uh, for, uh, sdk so uh, if you want to go through step by step and learn and see what it is please use this link also in my next slide i'm going to give you Another exciting thing. So this is, this is a this is an example. I think it's very simple and is just give you the idea of what you can do with Espressense. This is a simple example. The game rock scissor, rock paper scissor. I think most of us are familiar with this. If not, it means that so rock is uh, so you are showing gesture with your hand of a rock or a scissor or a paper, and what we are doing here. 
is we are building that uh, database means I'm taking a lot of pictures from uh, uh, from the different gesture of my hand for rock and scissor and paper. When I build that database, I need to take it to NNC, Neural Network uh, uh, Console from Sony, and then I build my network, I bring it to Expressions. So what is the expectation? I need to detect the gesture of my hand. So if you show, we use the Expressions camera, so if it shows the scissor, is gonna, on a little LCD, it shows you this is a scissor, or if it's rock, it shows this is a, this is a rock. The important thing here is, this is, this is a very simple example, but what I want to tell you is this demo is only using three out of six ARM cores. And just with using three cores, is uh, the, the execution time is only uh, 0 0.07 uh, seconds. So this is really fast. That's why we say Espressence is good for edge computing. If you need a device to be constantly connected to the cloud and communicate with the cloud, don't go for Espressence. Espressence is good for edge computing, means it's sitting somewhere, it's detecting some uh, data, and then when it needs to get connected, then it's gonna get connected to the cloud. This is a very simple example. I have also provided the video here for you, so make sure you go and watch it, and then it's very simple, it's a very short video. Uh, so let's see what happened. I told you everything about hardware, software, what tools to use if you want to do AI. So now you have an understanding, a little bit of like of everything that what uh, what Espressence is. Now let's see what can we build with this uh, Espressence. What are the target applications? Um, in in this section, I'm, I have divided this to four different groups. One is the first one that I'm going to talk about is Industry 4.0 applications. Why Industry 4.0? Because we have a lot of factories, a lot of machineries that they are old. We cannot replace them. We cannot just shut down a factory and say, oh, we're going to replace everything. Not only the production line is going to be delayed, but also you will not um, have the budget. You don't, it's going to be very expensive. What if we can monitor this factory and make it a little bit more smarter? So let's see what Espressence can bring to this, uh, to this um, industry uh, 4.0. Espressence has high resolution audio. So it's not just for music. You can detect sounds. You can look at, you can just uh, uh, detect the abnormal sounds from your machinery. The machine is working and then you can detect the sound. And then from that, you can compare, you can build your database and then if any abnormality happening, then you can detect it, you can prevent it, you can maintain it. So then your production line is not going to be delayed. So still, we can use this person to make our factory smart. This is one way. The other way is using image processing. Image processing, again, it can look at your, your machinery and if it sees anything abnormal. For example, here I'm showing the smoke is coming out. So hopefully it doesn't happen in your factory, but Again, if it happens, you'll have this device to detect it and then send an alert. Hey, come on, come to this um, uh, place and this I'm seeing some abnormalities, right? This is something wrong. Or one of the very, very, very popular applications that we see in so many factories is the meter reading. Meter reading, we have a lot of analog meters. In um, We have a lot of analog meters in our factories. So the, all the data, someone walks around, collects that data and share it with people that they are responsible or they need to take an action. But what if we can make it smarter? Why? What if we can make it um, more efficient? You can use the uh, camera um, uh, low power. Actually, this is uh, using the MA sensors and connected to the uh, express sense. And then look at the, the meter. And then when you look at the meter, basically you can detect and then get that information. And then you can do even some processing. Like this meter is is right on on the correct number or this is going over, the temperature is so high, I need to take an action and send a notification to people they, that they need to take an action. So these are just very simple examples. I'm sure people that they are working in factories, they have so many other issues that they can uh, use Espressence to address them. I'm here providing a link to a VAR indication for uh, bearing using edge computing. This is actually uh, is uh, using the 
uh, high resolution audio to detect the abnormality in uh, in the factory so this is just mimicking that idea and using fft Fourier transfer and all of those things to detect that um, this is another link that i'm providing to uh, for you uh, make sure that you go there and uh, take a look the other application so we are done with industry let's go to another application so of course agriculture our environment these are very important to us because our, our life depends on it. it's one of the sources for our, for us to survive is uh, how our um, agriculture and environment is doing right so for uh, express sense is we have worked with uh, researchers we uh, and also we have worked on some uh, applications targeting issues in the to to address some of the issues that we get in our farm so i'm talking about the picture with the cows on the left side so um so you as um you you see cows like roaming around grazing and enjoying their life probably on the field and then um we have done some uh, projects to detect animals where they are located of course we have gps capability and also monitor the health of our animals and see um, if they need to be attended or if there is something wrong we can take care of it so and also there are so many other uh, mo so many other applications that we can use to uh, monitor our animals maybe they are grazing in one specific location and then that location uh, we find out why maybe then we can uh, if we need to uh, switch the place or um, many other details that a farmer can take care of it and make it more uh, efficient uh, for them. They can use espressos for it. And also, I'm talking about the picture below that is about uh, soil data con uh, collection. We are working with um, with uh, uh, with uh, agriculture companies, and they're building drones using espressos with uh, one of the state of the art image sensors from. Uh, Sony and uh, what what's happening they are giving the farmers different type of crops and they want to see in a year or three months how they are doing and then this drone is going all over the field collecting the information and share that information with farmers not only that with uh, with the uh, agriculture companies to see how they can improve their products also insurance companies they need this information as well because they wanted to see how this uh, field is doing and then as far as supporting and all of this uh, thing they can get that information and they find it very useful uh, so let's look at the the other picture on the right side so the top one i'm talking about the crop monitoring the crop monitoring we have done a very exciting project with ibm uh, watson and uh, basically if you click on this video um, uh, if you click on this video you can see the demo what we have built is uh, just a little garden that you need to take care of the temperature, light, and the health of your plants. So you can detect all of that information and uh, sense all of that using expressions. And then uh, when you have uh, that information, if you need to do any communication with the cloud, you do the communication with the cloud, and then you send the alert or notification. You can even make it, uh, 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 you know, add voice command to it or many other things. But basically, just to mimic that idea that how you can monitor your crops, this is another example. Another exciting project that we did was with enthusiastic developers from uh, all over the world, and one of them is from Argentina. We are concerned about our wildlife. We don't want it to get um, uh, harmed from uh, a lot. There are a lot of people that they, uh, you know, they harm our uh, environment or wildlife. So the project was basically monitoring the wildcats that they are going. Uh, they are they, they are just uh, instinct because of all these people they are trying to make money out of it so they are monitoring the cats and for uh, for this kind of application you need something that is sitting in the middle of nowhere that it doesn't have access to power and also you need to do edge compute uh, edge computing because if some illegal activities happens if you hear for example a, a sound of a um, gone or something like that then you need to detect it and send an alert and then um, or uh, so so you, you 
you need to use the low power and edge computing uh, capabilities for this kind of application because forest we are not living in the forest right so it's so far away from our habitat but we need to get that information to go and rescue these animals to go and help and to go and uh, 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 use this technology to save our wildlife at the same time what i would like to say is about our forests there are a lot of people that they are trying to uh, do illegal activities like logging and illegal logging which they uh, uh, which we can use as presence again for audio for example or gps or other capabilities that it will detect the saw is working and someone is cutting these uh, trees and then you can send a notification so a lot of a lot of uh, so many applications that um, uh, we can cover in this section but uh, let's go to the next one, and I, I'm talking about the third one, which is infrastructures, smart cities, applications that is around us in the place that you're living in. So there, there, are, uh, there are applications that you can use as presence for surveillance camera, against cameras, you may, you may need to collect some um, information, images, and the Express has six cores, so you can uh, you can do a lot of image processing. We can use fish eye lens camera to, uh, with Express to pair it up with Express to do some of this, uh, um, some of this application for surveillance camera. Also, uh, we need to monitor our rivers because of the chemical. Again, these are something that constantly you need to check if you need to, if you see some uh, something that is not matching with your uh, spec then you need to send an alert like this the chemical is too high or there's something new in this water and we are drinking this water or something like that also it's good if you want to use for traffic road monitoring again this is camera as you see camera 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 these are all image sensors and because again especially has six cores can handle this for the parking uh, monitor camera, this is a very interesting uh, application. We have built a demo for this. I have provided the link that you can go and check it out. So you are you are you want to go to work? You are going shopping? You are doing? Uh, uh, you are you are just uh, in the city and you want to find a parking? What if you can access? Uh, to different locations and see which one is it has availab availability before you going to before you go to a parking structure and go all the way around and find the right place for you to park. So it's going to save you time, save you money, less gas, and all of those things. Again, it makes our life smarter. Then we can use our time better, and also we don't waste money or. Uh, 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 a base money. So uh, the last application that I'm going to talk about here is the uh, is the power transmission towers. Any type of tower. This is a specifically is for the transmission towers that uh, you the, usually these towers are. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not in our city, but we need to constantly monitor this. I don't know. Uh, I live in California. So many of you may have. Uh, seen the wildfires happening in your area and some of them it just uh, started from this uh, uh, power uh, transmission towers or uh, so so constantly you need to monitor this also we have other projects that we are working on to for example monitor a water tank that uh, that is for the city to give water to the whole city you need to uh, check the level you need to see if the uh, pump is working or if there is any extra like some chemicals in the water so you need to do monitoring and these towers are very tall people are climbing up all the way up to collect this data but the express sense is low power it can do edge computing it can sit there and watch it 24 hours so why not this is this is about the infrastructures uh, for the city the last one that i want to talk about is medical application the examples that i have provided here is more toward low power and high resolution audio capability. The examples are electronic stethoscope, hearing aids, and portable ultrasonics. So what you see in all of this, they are not plugged in the wall 24 hours. You need to have the low power capability. And also for the, uh, you need to do some, uh, like for the ultrasonic, uh, you are doing a lot of image processing. What does it mean? I need processor, I need powerful processor to do that, and I need edge computing. So these are some of the applications that I would like to share with you for the medical. Hopefully we, we can use Espressons to address some of the issues that right now we have with this coronavirus. 
But uh, so this is just some applications that I share with you. So I'm going to the next section, which is the low power. So what is the secret of low power? You, so let's see what we have done so far. We went over all of the details as far as hardware, software development and programming things that you can do with Espressos. And then after that, I just told you about all the applications, but you're telling me, okay, this is IoT, you're saying low power, low power, how, why? So let's, let's go a little bit into details and see how Espresso is, is bringing this capability. Uh, when we say low power, what does it mean? How we are, we are maintaining this in Espresso? So the first slide is just looking at the transistor level. So transistor, don't get scared. This is just, this is just a very high level overview. I make it uh, very simple, then you, you understand. In the transistor level, we have here, first of all, what I'm doing here, I'm comparing the bulk CMOS and FDSOI. This is nothing but two different technologies. When we build our chip, when we build our silicon, we are using these two. So, but we have the choice. You can go with the bulk, you can go with, it, with the FDSOI. So, so far, so good. Let's move on. Now, what is happening here in at the silicon level, when you go all the way down in the in, in, in your chip, this is what you see. You have a gate, you have source, you have drain. What does it mean? It's just a switch. Gate is a switch. And if it uh, basically means you are turning on and off a light, this is how you transfer the power in your chip. Okay? So see what's happening. If you look at the box CMOS, I have the gate, I have the source, and I have the drain. The current is going from the source all the way to the drain. On the top picture, you see some arrows are bending. What does that mean? It means, oh, I have leakage here. Leakage means what? The power, yeah, I'm losing power here. So now look at the yellow box. The power that you're using for a box CMOS is 1.1 volt, okay? And we, I'm using the same ARM cores. I, I told you, we have six ARM cores. So I'm using the same ARM core, uh, and, but two different technologies, right? Now, let's see what, what Espressence has. Espressence is using FDSOI. What is FDSOI? It's a big word, but look at the uh, uh, look at the explanation on the right side. It's fully depleted SOI layer. What does it mean? What does it mean? So it means I have the gate, I have the source, I have the drain. The current is going from the source to drain. But do you see those bending arrows here? No. Why? Because I have a silicon on insulator. What does it mean? Means I put insulated there, then I'm avoiding those leakage. If I avoid that leakage, leakage, what does it mean? Means I am using less power. So now let's go back to the uh, yellow box, and here you see only 0 0.7 volt. So compare 1.1, 0 0.7. So I think now you know why when we say Espressence is low power and we are using FDSOI, what does it mean? This is at the transistor level. So we talk about this next. Ne uh, next, let's look at the block diagram. So that is like a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it's very much deep down inside. And now let's look at our block diagram. What what is happening here is uh, you see red, yellow, uh, green, and blue blocks. Each of these has uh, we have divided this uh, CXT five six zero. Two, which was the brain, which was what I had on the main board, and uh, I told you is um, uh, so. So that one is basically I'm showing you in high level what are the blocks, and each of these blocks is responsible for something. The red block, what is it called? Application domain. The application domain, what is uh, doing is processing um, a block for you. So it's process block uh, for user application. What is the yellow one? Yellow one is system and IOP domain. So this basically this block is managing all of input, output, and power for you. And then I have a green block, which is the sensor domain. You are controlling all of the sensor that it comes to your um, board in this block. And then at the end, GNSS domain. GNSS is global navigation satellite system. So it's your GPS, is your bonus, is all, all the navigation uh, system that uh, cell system that you have uh, on your board. So the reason that I put this here and let's see how with this um, the different blocks I can save power. Look at the green 
uh, look at the green uh, block here. I'm going to start from there. Why? Because when you have your IoT application, you connect to so many sensors. I talk about applications like in the farm. So you just you you need to get the temperature, you need to get the light, you need to see if your plant is healthy or not. All of those sensors comes to the chip and goes to this green one, right? When it goes to this green one, um, what I'm telling you now is okay. If you need to take any action. Then you go, so this, this offers, first of all, when it comes to this block, means this block, this block is awake and uh, it comes out of either, right? Uh, and But if you need to uh, communicate, if you need to get any IO power, then you go to the red one. And if you need to do any processing, then you go to the red, red block. Or what does it mean is basically all of this block at the beginning are in a sleep mode, they are, they are idle. They are not on. They are not using any power. But as you progress and as your application needs to access this block, it wakes them up. So that's how we are saving power. So this is at the block level to just give you a, an overview. Another good way to explain this maybe is if I show you the power transmission, uh, how the transition, how it's happening from one stage to another stage, and I'm highlighting the amount of power that I'm using. So, so ignore the, uh, the middle blocks, just, just look at the two uh, yellow ones on the side. And then on the top corner, I am just uh, highlighting the different blocks that, that uh, we have in, this, uh, in, in, in the block level, right? The, the green and yellow and all of those that I talk about. So here you have in the yellow one on the right side, you get all of your inputs. This input can be a motion sensor, it could be a microphone, it could be an analog sensor. So, for example, you are getting some, uh, some information from any of these sensors. When it comes first to the stage one, it means that the sensor control unit needs to take care of this information. What does it mean if I need to stay here, so a motion has been detected, do I need to stay here or do I need to get I.O.? If I need to stay here, don't take any action, at this level, stage one, you are using under only 100 uh, microwatt. So this is this is the amount of power that you're using here. But then, if you need to access the I/O, you need to go to stage two, the yellow one, which is gonna increase the power. So at this point, it's 500 now. And then eventually, when you go to the last stage, which, which is a stage three, means you have already. So what happens at this point? So I have the motion. Uh, I sense the motion and I detect it. Now I have to do some moving or not moving. If I need to do moving, then I need to go to the stage three, which is um, uh, at the end is going to send some uh, output, right? Like it could be audio control, camera control, AI control, or GPS control. And at this point, I uh, you look at the number of power that I'm I'm using. So this is another way to explain the previous um, slide. I'm going to go through the, uh, it, you know, you, you now you're familiar with this block as the uh, um, uh, green, yellow, and red, and blue. And I'm going to give you a little bit more information about each of those to get a better understanding of how we are maintaining this low power. So first one is the, is the, uh, red uh, red block red block it was application domain this is all the processing this was the last one last stage stage three right so here uh, is basically this this specific block is doing the uh, multi-core control and low power consumption everything is from here what is happening uh, look at the uh, look at the bubbles that are made on these pictures the top one it says CPU cores in no use, turn off uh, automatically. So for, I told you we use ASMP. ASMP means for each processor, you have a dedicated memory. Again, if you are using the processor, the processor is, is turn off, turn on. And if at the same time, if, if you are accessing that tile, me, that memory for that specific uh, processor, then you wake that up too. Otherwise it's gonna be uh, turned off. So at this level, what you need to know is I am doing application domain, my processor is here, but if I'm not using the processor, it's off. If I'm not using that memory uh, dedicated to that processor, is off. So this is all about this one. Let's go to, so this was my stage three red, 
And then now let's go back to the yellow one, which was the middle or stage two. At this point, I'm doing a lot of system IO and power management. Again, this is uh, supporting multiple power modes uh, and uh, to see how uh, multiple power mode. When I say multiple power mode, so we have power off or uh, we have deep sleep, we have cold sleep, hot sleep. So what we did here, basically, we provided um, this feature, it means you can play with these different modes to uh, save power. So uh, I, uh, I have, um, uh, if you see on the right side, I have a table. It may not show all of the details. I will provide the slides, then you can see better. But these are the, diff this is nothing but how you can play with different power modes that we have. To understand that better, I, I am providing a link here. What is it uh, doing? This is actually a very good example. You can build your prototype, and then basically you can use a dime size battery uh, and connect it to a dime size ba battery, and then you don't need to for, worry about it for six months. So this is how you can manage the different power modes for Espressos to provide that uh, capability. So, the last one, no, not last one, actually, I have one more. So this is the, about the sensor. This is the green one, the one that is, first of all, before everybody else is waking up because it gets all of the sensor data. Here is, uh, uh, we, we are getting a bunch of data from our sensor, so it's uh, controlling all of those. How it controls it, first of all, what I would like to say, you can get this data from I2C or SPI or ADC, any of this, and then you have a sensor engine. In this sensor engine, you are doing sequencer and I, I, uh, uh, FIR filter, and then the output of that is either you need to take an action, means event has been detected, so you send a message to DMA controller, or you need to stay uh, idle, so that goes in, the, in your FIFO. It's gonna stay there. So this is how we are saving power. So if, the, if you don't need to take any action, it's gonna stay in FIFO, right? But if you need to, get to take an action, then the event is detected and you go to the DMA. Last one, finally, for this section, for low power, is the GNSS. This GNSS, what I would like to tell you, first of all, is supporting GPS in the US, GLONASS in Russia, Galileo in Europe, and then by the in China, and QZSS in Japan. So if you are anywhere in this world and you want to use the GPS, you have no limitation. And also, it's super low power. And on top of that, it has a dedicated uh, core for just this GNSS. We have six cores plus this one, we have seven cores but one core is just dedicated to this GNSS. This is one of uh, another uh, set of the art products from Sony that we are using in other things. And we brought that in this development board as well. Uh, so last thing for the low power, let's do some comparison. Now you have learned deep down inside what is happening in the block level, what is happening in the transistor level. Let's move on and see some examples that you may be more familiar with, like Raspberry Pi or Arduino, and see how we are doing comparing uh, Espressons with those two. Again, this is just to give you information. It doesn't mean we are better, they are better. It depends on your application. So look at the power consumption. The power consumption for Espressons, Espressons is the col column in the middle. So the power consumption for Espressons is 30 milliwatt. 30 milliwatt with six cores. And then if you, if you compare it to Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi is 500 milliwatt. And by the way, this, when, when I say power consumption, means there is no load. And then for the Raspberry Pi, I put a star two up there. So it's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are off, right? So compare the power. So if your application needs very low power, maybe Espressons is, is your choice, is a good choice for your application. Also, Arduino Nano, again, these are examples. These are, these are very popular. These are good products out there that we, we see a lot of developers are using. So we are just giving you some information. Then you can make the comparison and see where you're standing with Espressons. And then if you look at the calculation, calculation power, so for the Raspberry Pi is uh, 1250 uh, dmips. And then for Espresson is 1170 DMIPS. Then Arduino is 20 DMIPS. So this is this for the calculation power. If you have more, means you are better. You are doing a better job. But 
uh, Raspberry Pi has an ARM 11, only one core. We have six cores, and then with the 30 milliwatt power, I think this is this is just to give you the information. Like, okay, I ha I get enough um, power here. And then um, as far as board size, it's important because we are building prototypes. We want to know how big our prototype is getting. So it's very much comparable. So it's right in the middle between Arduino and Raspberry Pi. And let's look at other features that they are providing. Arduino doesn't have any, but if you compare Espressons with Raspberry Pi, GNSS, the, the GPS available that, that we have integrated in the board is not available in Raspberry Pi. But both we have uh, audio, but we have high resolution audio, of course. So this is, if you need to detect those noise in your machine or other examples that I gave you, so maybe this is a better choice, but again. And then camera interface both, uh, it has it, on top of that, Raspberry Pi has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and um, we have, we provide add-ons that you, then it makes it more flexible. You can go with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, or anything that you want. But again, it depends on you, it depends on application, depends on what you want to do with, uh, what, are you, what are you trying to achieve. So this section, it was all about low power, one of the features, and now this is another thing that I would like to talk about. This is multi-core programming, is um, it's powerful because uh, we know a lot of people using Arduino ID, but what we did, we made it easy to do multi-core programming with Arduino uh, ID. Here is um, just a quick uh, overview of what's happening. We have six ARM cores, but keep that in mind. There is always one core being the main core, and then I have five sub cores that I can use. So main core is in blue, and sub cores are in uh, is in yellow, and. Um, Let's see what is the memory allocation for this course. Uh, we have uh, 1.5 megabytes, so we divide it by 12 tiles, 12 blocks. I told you each core can have a dedicated memory. So we divided it up to two sections, the blue and yellow. Blue was what? It was my main core. And then the yellow was subcore. We dedicated six tiles to main core. Why? Because you are doing audio codec there. You need memory. So that's half of it, and the rest it goes to your subcore. So you can dedicate two of these tiles, you can dedicate three of these tiles to your uh, specific subcores, or you can uh, just have one uh, memory tile dedicated to the um, to the subcore. Uh, uh, if you want to look at a good example to start with, I have provided a link here. So this is multi-core tutorial. Please go to our website and uh, check this out. At this point, I think I covered everything. So hopefully now you know more about the Spresence, you know what are the specs, why it has six cores, why is it low power, how you can do multi-core programming with Arduino IDU, and where is it standing compared to other products. And then if you wanna do, at the end, what I would like to say is if you wanna do any edge computing with low power, Spresence is a very um, a good choice to, uh, to use. So I think this is the last uh, thing that I want to talk about. And uh, we are, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining this webinar. Again, uh, we are so sorry about the uh, technical difficulty. Apparently everybody is using this uh, platform and it has been like, it crashed on us so many times. But uh, so now we are ready to take questions and um, um, I take it, I give it over to Odette. Odette, please take over. I think we have another. Uh. Um, I I am not sure what is happening right now. I am waiting for. 
uh, the organizer to take over the session now. I think we still have some technical difficulties. Uh, please send us your questions. And uh, I think the organizer is has access to that, but I don't know why we don't have uh, the connection or something. 